From the snowy mountains of Tibet, the cold deserts of Patagonia, the African savanna to the Amazon rainforest, and the boreal taiga forests of Siberia. What do all of these extremely diverse different ecosystems have in common? They all have a cat as their top predator. This isn't a recent phenomenon, but since the Pleistocene. The Felids have come out on top of every ecosystem they have arrived in from prehistory until the modern era to the point where the rare period of time where cats were not apex predators in any ecosystem in the world was known as the Cat Gap. Every major ecosystem in every part of the world has been dominated by cats, all with the notable exception of the island continent of Australia. Until now, Australia's native marsupial predators, such as Thylacolio, also known as the marsupial lion, the thylacine, also known as the Tasmanian tiger, Megalania, the giant monitor lizard, and the modern-day Tasmanian devil, all went extinct on the mainland shortly after the arrival of humans on the continent. Then, about 3,000 years ago, an unknown people, most likely maritimers from South or Southeast Asia, arrived in Australia and brought with them their semi-feral dogs which have been proven by DNA analysis to be closely related to Asian wolves. Their descendants returned to the wild in Australia, adapted, outcompeted the existing predators, and are now known as dingoes. Since then, dingoes have been Australia's undisputed apex predators. Fast forward a few thousand years later, to the 18th century. European colonists land in Australia, and the settlers introduce a plethora of new placental animals to the island continent. Donkeys, rabbits, goats, pigs, deer, horses, and the list really goes on and on and on. Among these introduced animals, there were two voracious predators quick to take advantage of the fragile ecosystem, European red foxes and feral cats. The phalids finally made their way to Australia. While the Australian ecosystem had come to adapt to the presence of dingoes as apex predators and so were somewhat prepared for another canid species like foxes, Australia's native wildlife were unprepared to deal with such a highly efficient ambush predator such as a cat, and many species were and continue to be subsequently decimated with the oncoming onslaught. Before we proceed with this installment, I would like to issue an advisory warning. You will see photographs of dead cats here. But please note that these are all invasive feral animals that were killed in remote parts of Australia and have been wreaking ecological havoc for centuries. Their culling is entirely commissioned and even encouraged by the Australian government. These Australian feral cats are a destructive super predator that have about as much in common with your common house cat as with any bobcat or wolverine. Australia's feral cat population exploded due to their rapid, prolific reproduction rates. As they spread across the continent, they encountered various challenges leading to adaptations that allowed them to thrive in diverse ecosystems in Australia. All outdoor cats are deemed a huge threat to the ecosystem. However, there is a distinction between feral, stray, and domestic cats in Australia. Domestic cats are owned pets, which may or may not be let out with their owner's supervision. Stray cats are free-roaming cats that depend on human sustenance to varying degrees. The definition of stray cats in Australia would parallel how feral cats are defined in North America. Feral cats live entirely in the bush, extremely cautious of humans, and are by all means wild animals with the same instincts as any wildcat species. But there is another fact about feral cats in Australia, which is increasingly being brought up in conversations about them. Some of these Australian feral cats are growing to be absolutely huge. People, these cats in the outback have no predators. And unlimited prey, they're getting fucking huge. Sure. Huge. What? That's crazy. And people are out hunting them, which, by the way... It's the biggest cat you've ever seen. Like, feral cat taken out. What are we talking? Four kilos? Five kilos? Uh, I've, I've seen uh, feral cats here reach over 10 kilos. Um, and I, I believe there's one animal that uh, was destroyed a couple of years ago up in Cape York. Um, I didn't have any weights or scales on me, but I, I think he would have gone around 12 kilos. 
is uh, an amazing size so animal. We're talking that's 24 pounds, 25 pound animal. We're talking bigger than a medium sized dog, yeah. Yep, definitely. Wow. Yeah, so I've, I've got border collies so and they're given... yeah, bigger than that. Shit. Yeah. The, um, they are selecting to be bigger. What's happening is there are no predators. Yeah. And they are, there is unlimited food. And, if, and the food's big, too, like wallabies and kangaroos and things like that. Damn. Sure. So the bigger you are as a cat, the more effective you can be as a predator. And so they're just, they're just getting... Who brought cats into the country as mousers, as companions, and they took them out into the very far reaches, the middle of Australia, where they became feral. Now the feral cat grows to weigh over 15 kil kilos, yes, and kills absolutely everything. As we discussed, the ecological impact of feral cats in Australia is well documented. Their highly successful predation skills pose the biggest threat to Australia's native wildlife. I have created this installment so that people realize how vastly different feral cats in Australia are from domestic cats. Making this distinction prevalent could give the Australian government less international criticism to do everything that needs to be done to protect indigenous species and secure the natural balance. In the last year, I have taken to calling this subgroup of Australia's feral cats as mega cats. Others, including a leading Australian wildlife ecologist, Bronwyn Fancourt, who has extensive research experience in vertebrate pest control, predator interactions, and threatened species conservation, have called them wallaby hunters. In a Twitter post, she gives a brief description of the feral cats in a national park in the remote, semi-arid outback of Queensland, Australia, an area she has done extensive research. She says, these cats are wallaby hunters, very big jaws, skulls, and associated musculature. Centuries of hunting prey as big as wallabies seem to have created a whole new beast out of the feral cats in this region. Mega Cats was coined by the founder of Tetrapod Zoology, science writer and paleontologist Darren Nash, in his 2007 article, Australia's New Feral Mega Cats. In that article, he became the first, officially, to suggest feral cats in Australia were taking full advantage of the vast open apex predator niche to grow to enormous sizes, and that they may account for some, if not many, of the legendary cryptid panther sightings in the Australian bush, which we'll get to in depth later on. Just a year prior to the publishing of Tetrapod Zoology's Mega Cats article, a panther was shot in Gippsland, Australia. DNA test results proved it to be a feral domestic cat, but yet it measured twice that of an ordinary house cat. I would probably think that it's um, just uh, large feral cats. So um, once they get out into the wild for a couple of, after a couple of generations, they actually get to about twice the size of your regular household cat. Um, and people aren't used to seeing cats that big. In 2005, deer hunter Kurt Engel shot this huge creature keeping only its 60 centimetre tail. It just shot up and came towards me. The DNA chest... test revealed it was 98% certain to be a feral cat. Well, I have never seen any feral cat, you know, being nearly two metres long. I just wanted to share this news article from Gympie, a remote town in Queensland, Australia. A man was viciously attacked by a large, feral cat while protecting his own cat from being eaten, yes, eaten. Feral mega cats have begun seeing domestic cats as prey and willing to attack a grown man to do so. The interesting thing about Gympie, where this attack took place, is that it is a region somewhat famous in Australia for alleged cryptid panther sightings. Is it just a coincidence that a giant feral cat attack also took place here too? How long before people start saying a mega cat ate my baby instead of a dingo ate my baby?
Ordinarily, there isn't a dramatic difference in size between feral cats and house cats. In fact, elsewhere in the world, truly wild, feral cats are typically smaller than house cats because, well, they aren't getting fed treats every other hour of the day, and they aren't getting full meals from their owners, and they aren't being let out of the house by their owners to hunt songbirds for fun snacks. So why would Australian feral cats be different? To give you an idea of how big Australia is, you can pretty much fit all of the United States landmass inside of it. Only difference being that most of interior Australia is barren and arid, uninhabitable for most people, but a paradise for feral cats whose wildcat ancestors evolved in the deserts of the Near East. Leave them alone in that kind of isolation as apex predators for 200 years and you really don't think that they'll start to turn into something else in certain parts of such a vast area. I mean, it's happened before. In Madagascar, there is the Fitoati, also known as the Malagasy Forest Cat, which made headlines in a CNN article. It is a large cat in the dense forests of Madagascar. It is distinguished from ordinary feral cats by the locals and has almost cryptid status because of how rarely seen it is. DNA tests prove that the Fitoati is descended from Middle Eastern wildcats aboard the ships of Arabian traders a thousand years ago and reverted to a wild state. The Corsican cat fox, a similar animal in the Mediterranean province of Corsica and who also made headlines in a CNN article. These animals descended from feral cats kept by the Romans almost 2,000 years ago, and for which there is currently a huge discussion as to whether they constitute a new subspecies of African wildcat at this point, or if they're still feral domestic cats. On the nearby island of Sardinia, there is also a wildcat with similarly contested origins. On another Mediterranean island, the Greek island of Crete, there is the Cretan wildcat. It was previously considered a separate subspecies of wildcat as Felis sylvestris cretensis, but later revealed to have the same origins as the so-called wildcats of Corsica and Sardinia. Domestic cats from the Roman era that went feral and have adapted to the isolated island ecosystem as apex predators. So, is it really that hard to imagine that just like these animals, cats in extremely isolated parts of the outback I'm talking a day, two to three days drive from the nearest human settlement, wouldn't undergo any similar changes as these aforementioned wild cats? Last but not least, we have Australia's very own dingo as an example. As we mentioned earlier, dingoes were introduced to Australia at a time when dogs were still semi-domesticated and still quite close to wolves but they've been around for long enough that they can be considered a separate species, and for the ecosystem to have adapted to their presence. Dogs have been domesticated for about 20,000 or so years, while cats have been for little over 10,000 years. It took 4,000 years for dingoes to undomesticate in the Australian bush. It would make sense that it would take far less time for the cats to rewild. Australian feral megacats aren't just urban legends told by hunters in the outback. Leading Australian wildlife conservation organization, Arid Recovery, has confirmed that in their experience, some feral cats can grow gigantic as big as a small dingo. As we mentioned earlier, there are an estimated 5 to 10 million feral cats in the Australian bush at any given time. Let's say just 0.7% of these cats can be classified as feral megacats. That's up to 35,000 to 70,000 dingo-sized feline predators, basically small leopards in the outback. If this indeed is the case, it's small wonder that many are seeing cryptid panthers in the bush. Wheat Belt Management, an organization that provides leadership in the management of natural resources of Australia's Wheat Belt region, a remote, scarcely populated part of Western Australia, explained that they have had experience with 13 kilo feral cats, and on their website make a clear distinction between ordinary feral cats and the larger specimens. Larger specimens being our mega cats or wallaby hunters, Remember how I mentioned at the beginning about how every ecosystem has an apex predator cat. When you look at cases like the lions in the Okavango Delta, leopards in Sri Lanka, pumas in Patagonia, tigers in Siberia, jaguars in the Amazon, 
It makes sense why some Australian feral cats are becoming mega cats. It's in their DNA. When felids are dominant apex predators, their revolutionary response seems to be to become as big as possible. Savannah cats and Bengal cats are exotic cat breeds formed from the hybridization of domestic cats with wild cats such as servals and Asian leopard cats, respectively. These exotic cat breeds are banned in Australia for the very reason that if some of these cats were to go astray, which would inevitably happen, they could introduce powerful wildcat genetics into Australia's invasive cat population and eventually introduce their genetics to the feral megacat population. That was a smart, scientifically-based decision. Maine Coons are the largest purebred domestic cat breed without hybrid genetics. They can grow to be 8 to 10 kilograms or 22 pounds. It was previously believed that Maine Coons were hybridized with bobcats or were descended from Siberian or Norwegian long-haired cat breeds. Research studies have revealed that Maine Coons were typical short-haired domestic moggies that arrived on British ships, just like the ancestors of our Australian megacats, and reached their enormous sizes as a result of adapting to the harsh climates in which natural selection pressures for similar qualities. Thick, long coats, toe and ear tufts, big bodies and lynx-like, snowshoe-like big feet are useful traits in the harsh Maine forests, where the Maine Coons originated in. If the origin of Maine Coons is correct, I think these Australian feral megacats might be the Australian Outback's counterpart of the Maine Coons. They have similar origins descending from cats aboard British colonial ships, found themselves in far-flung regions of the British Empire, and adapted to their respective new environments. Growing to huge sizes being one of these new adaptations. Rather than a subspecies like we were talking about earlier, these megacats could represent a new naturally developed wild breed of cat unique to the Australian bush, a wallaby hunting Maine Coon of the outback. But I actually think there's potential for some of these feral cat populations to be producing gigantic feral cats, like not, not cougar size, but, you know, uh, 30, 40 pound cats. Um, there, are, there's some evidence of that in feral cats in Australia that they're getting really big in the wild. Feral cats, descendants of domestic cats introduced by European settlers, have adapted to the Australian environment, and over the centuries, the lack of predatory competition, vast amount of prey to hunt in wide range of territory, has allowed introduced predators, such as feral cats and foxes, to thrive and wreak havoc on the outback's ecosystem for the last few centuries, this has likely influenced the size behavior and hunting instincts of a segment of Australia's feral cat population, which seem to be undergoing a gradual process of natural selection to become larger and more robust predators. To become mega cats. Thank you all so much for tuning back into Eclectic Explorations. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and spread the word as much as you can. Again, I would greatly appreciate any form of donations to keep all of this going.